Let's add custom blocks to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we find ourselves back in Telegram once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom blocks to our project over here. 1.21.1 actually, but luckily no particular crazy changes have occurred. So we can simply jump in. And what you will find is that the way to add custom blocks is actually pretty similar to the way that we add custom items. First and foremost, in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called block. And inside of there, we'll make a new Java class, which we're going to call the mod blocks class. There we go. And then we will actually see now to properly register blocks. There are a couple of things. The first thing, of course, we will once again need is a public static void. I'm going to call this the register mod blocks method over here where we will call tutorial mod dot logger simply tap tap to auto completed. We're going to call the info right here. I'm going to say registering mod blocks for and this is going to be for tutorial mod dot mod ID in this case. Once again, the contents here not strictly necessary, but I do like to add something in there and then we can go to our tutorial mod class over here in the on initialize method and say mod blocks that register mod blocks. And there we go. With this, the mod blocks will be properly well initialized. And now the question is, what else do we need? Well, to register blocks, you not only need to register the block, you also need to register the item that is associated with it. So for this, we will make two helper methods over here. The first one is going to be a private static void register block item method which takes in a string name parameter as well as a block, making sure we choose net Minecraft block over here. And we're going to call that parameter the block. This is going to simply call registry, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry. Very important. If you import Java RMI registry, then you're going to get an error. It has to be the registry from net Minecraft registry. We're going to call the register method on this, passing in registries.item and then an identifier dot of. So we're simply going to choose this one, tap to auto complete it, passing in tutorial mod dot mod underscore ID. And the second parameter is going to be the name. After the first closing parentheses, we can then make a new block item, very important, a block item. And here we pass in the block parameter and then new item dot settings and end this with a semicolon. As always, of course, all of the code is also available down below in the GitHub repository. So you should be good to go there. If you want to, for example, copy over the helper methods here, that is totally fine. The second helper method is going to help us regi register a block. So there's going to be a private static block in this case called register block over here with also a string name parameter and a block block parameter. Pretty interesting. Here, we simply call the register block item method, passing in both the name as well as the block. Very simple in this case. And then we will return a registry that register passing in the registries that block this time, then an identifier that of passing in tutorial mod that mod ID, then the name. And after the first closing parenthesis, simply passing in the block. And there we go. That's literally all we need to do. And those are our two helper methods done. Now, there are plenty of different ways that we can do this, right? We can also register the block sort of inline and then go through all of the blocks and then register the block items like that. I personally don't like doing it like this. I personally like these two helper methods and that's basically all you really need. And now the question is how can we, well, register our first block? It is going to be more straightforward than you might think. This is a public static final block and we're going to call this the pink underscore garnet underscore block, which is going to be equal to the just created register block method over here. The name is going to be pink underscore garnet underscore block. And then the second parameter is a new block. In this case, once again, tap to auto completed. And here we want to use the abstract block that settings that create. So once again, I just put in a dot over here and then do the tap and then press tab to auto complete them. And then here we can add some block settings. The first one might be the strength. This determines how long it takes to break this block. Let's say a 4F is going to be fine. We can then also call the requires tool method. Very importantly, when it comes to both the requires tool and the blocks that we add right now, they will not drop anything regardless of what you do. 
because for that we actually need to add loot tables and that is done in a different tutorial. So keep that in mind that currently the blocks are not going to drop anything regardless of what you mine them with. So we're going to call the requires tool because in, in this case, right, this pink garnet block is sort of like a gem block similar to like a diamond block. And I feel like that you will need to have a tool for this and can't just mine it with your hands. I feel like that's fair. And then we can also, for example, say a sound over here and the sound might be the block sound group of, I think an amethyst block would be really cool because in this case it is sort of a gem block and I feel like that could be kind of nice. Because this is a builder pattern, you can of course call all sorts of other methods here as well. What I highly recommend is you either just play around with them or you can press shift twice and look at the blocks class. So blocks and then include non-project items. And that is from net Minecraft block right here. And you can actually see all of the different blocks from vanilla right here and basically see all of their block settings that are being used. And I, I can definitely tell you there are very, very interesting things over here. So definitely take a look at those as well. But that is our block basically registered, right? Now, of course, the next step would be how do we add them to a creative mode tab? Well, we, there are several different ways. We can, of course, go back over here to our modify entries right here and add them to the ingredients. I don't know about that. Let's actually do this in the register block, right? And what we can do is literally the same thing that we've done before because adding it to the ingredients, I, I, that doesn't quite jive with me. I think that we want to do item group events dot modify entries event. I'm going to say item groups dot. And this time I actually want to use the building blocks over here. So I'm going to choose that. Press the tab key to autocomplete it. We're going to call the register method and then start typing in entries. Once again, tab to autocomplete it. And then between the curly brackets, we can then simply say entries dot add and then mod blocks dot pink garnet block. There you go. And now the pink garnet block is also being added to the building blocks. This once again is how to add the blocks to a already existing vanilla item group. The custom item groups, well, we'll see that in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. But for now, the question is, okay, we now have our block. What else do we need? Oh boy. Now we get to the assets. And that is where the, I mean, you know, where the S starts hating the fan, so to speak, because there's a lot of stuff that we have to do. Previously, for our items, we only had item model JSON files. So one JSON file and one line in the en underscore US JSON file for the translation. That was all we needed for the items. For blocks, however, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. For this, I'm going to create the folder structure first, and then we'll actually populate all of this with everything we need. So in assets tutorial mode, we're going to right click new directory called block states. Very important that this is written correctly, block states. Then we want to go to the models directory and create a new directory called block. And then inside of the textures directory, we want to create a new directory called block as well. We're going to start at the very top over here with the block states JSON file. So the block states JSON file is going to be sort of determining how this particular block looks like or what model it refers to inside of the world when you place it down. So in this block states folder, we're going to right click new file called the pink underscore garnet underscore block.json, noting that the name right here has to match the name that we're giving it right here. Very important. And then, of course, a .json file ending. I'm going to type out the contents of this. This is, of course, also going to be available to you down below. And then I will explain after I have done so. So here we need a model. And that is a tutorial mod colon block slash pink underscore garnet garnet underscore block. There we go. That is the whole entire block states JSON file for a basic block that doesn't have any sort of changes. So for example, what could those changes be? Well, let's think about a crop block, right? Let's think about wheat, right? Wheat has an age property because of course it grows over time. So we're basically, when we are in wheat, we refer to a different model depending on the age property. In our case, we have a simple block that ha doesn't have any variants. Therefore, we have an empty variant right here and we are only pointing to one model. Right. And what is this model? Well, this model is once again under tutorial mod, right? Under the models over here in the block folder. And it's going to be called pink underscore garnet underscore block that JSON. So that is the block model JSON file that this refers to. And we're going to create that. So in the models block folder, right click new file, pink underscore garnet underscore block that JSON. There we go. And the contents of this are going to be eerily similar to something we have seen before because, well, I'm going to once again just start typing and then explain afterwards. So we're going to have a parent over here with Minecraft colon block slash cube underscore all. And then we're going to have a texture. So there's a textures object with all. And this all is going to be tutorial mod 
colon block slash pink underscore garnet underscore block. And what you'll find is that this looks incredibly similar to the item model JSON file. And you would be absolutely correct. I mean, look at them, right? Side by side, they are almost the exact same, right? The differences are basically the parent and then also the textures, right? So just a little bit of a difference here, but the general idea is that the block model JSON file once again determines, okay, how does this particular block look like, right? What are the textures, like how can I display them? And in this case, we're going to say, hey, this is going to be a cube all, meaning that all of the sides, all of the six sides have the same texture. And we define this right here once again, right via tutorial mod, textures over here, textures in the block folder, and it's going to look for the pink underscore garnet underscore block PNG. This one, of course, will be available to you as well. So we're going to copy this over, pink underscore garnet underscore block PNG. And that is what it refers to. And that's pretty cool. Now, if we were to jump into the game right now, what would happen is that our block would have a texture inside of the world, but it wouldn't have a texture inside of the inventory. And it also wouldn't have a name, a proper name. So first of all, the item model JSON file, because what happens when you have a block, right? We registered the block right here, but we also registered an item. And for every item, you need an item model JSON file. So for this, inside of the models item folder, we're going to right click new file, put the pink underscore garnet underscore block dot JSON again. However, this one luckily is really simple. This one simply has a parent and that parent points to tutorial mod colon block slash pink underscore garnet underscore block. Because this, in this case, simply points back to the block model JSON file that we've defined right here. And it's going to display that particular block model JSON file in the normal 3D way that you're used to when you're looking at blocks inside of the inventory. That's literally it. And that is why this is actually probably the easiest JSON file to basically understand. And then lastly, we want the translation. That one is also quite simple. We're now dealing with a block. So now we have tutorial mod block dot tutorial mod dot raw underscore pink underscore or not raw, actually just pink garnet block. There you go. That is going to be it. And that is going to be a block of pink garnet. Pretty freaking awesome. And now we actually have everything that we need for our custom block. You need a block states JSON file to determine what type of model it takes on inside of the world. You need that particular model that it points to, which basically determines how the how the 3D model looks like, as well as where the textures are placed and what textures are being placed. And then lastly, you need the item model JSON file. So it is also looking well, so that it also knows what model to use inside of the inventory. For that, of course, you need the texture as well as the translation that's going to be available, basically always needed. But yeah, after all of those things, we can now jump into the game and see our block for the first time. All right, finally, back in Minecraft. And let's take a look in the building blocks over here at the very bottom. There it is, the block of Pink Garnet. And you can see it also sounds exactly like Amethyst. And I actually think that for the texture, I think that works out very, very well. I think that is pretty awesome. And yeah, there you go. That is the custom block. It has a name. It has a texture both in the inventory as well as in the world. So that is pretty cool. However, as I've previously said, one is none. So let's add a second block as well. Right. What you'll find is that adding a second block is going to be infinitely more easy or, you know, compared to adding the first one. Basically, in our mod blocks class, we simply want another public static final block. And we're going to do the raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block equal to the register block method. And then the name here is the raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block. Quite the mouthful, but that is going to be fine. This is also a new block in this case with abstract block dot settings dot create where we can set the strength. Let's say this one is going to have a strength of three. Then it also will require a tool. And then maybe we don't actually have any specific sound for this one. Now this is registered to add it to the creative mode tab. You simply go down over here entries.add modblocks.raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block. And now, yes, we have to go through all of the different JSON files again. However, let's first of all add the translation. That's fairly simple. Right? That one is just block.tutorialmod.raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block over here. And that is the block of raw pink garnet. So that one, fairly simple. And then the rest over here, actually not as crazy too, because what we can do is when we have some JSON files that we know that work and we only need to change a couple of things, you can drag them into the same folder while holding control. And you can see the little plus over here, and that is going to duplicate this particular JSON file. And now we simply change the name, the new name to raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block. And we simply change it right here as well. 
and the new JSON file here is done. The same thing goes for the block model JSON file, dragging into the same folder while holding control, changing the name, and then changing the contents. And we do this one more time for the item model JSON file, raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block, and then here as well. And of course, you can't forget the texture. That one, of course, also available to you for download. So this is the raw underscore pink underscore garnet underscore block texture. Man, what a freaking long name. But well, there you go. And those are then all of the different things that we need in this case. So you can see after you've done this once or twice, you'll see that this is going to get more and like easier and easier. And one thing to basically mention here as well is that at any time, if you're like, oh man, like I still don't know how to, you know, add blocks, how to add items on my own. The best thing to do is repetition in this case. Literally just take a hundred blocks and add them, right? So do it exactly like this, go through all of this, delete everything again and do it again and do it again and watch the tutorial, you know, maybe two or three times, look at the GitHub repository, do it again and again and again, because by block 50, I'm telling you, you're going to be bored out of your mind because you're like, yeah, I know what to do. We got to get the register block item method and this and then this and this. And if you just repeat it over and over and over again, you at some point know how to do this. But yeah, because those are all of the steps, let's actually see the raw pink garnet block in the game as well. All right, and here we are in Minecraft, and let's take a look in the building blocks. There we freaking go. The raw pink garnet block also added to the game. Absolutely fantastic. And there you go. That is custom blocks added to Minecraft. As always, all of the code is available down below in the GitHub, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom creative mode tabs. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.